All right, better put this down. There's the old front setter. Now, if you can't half tell, working on Sooty Mark II at the moment. Now, this is the third part of this build series where we hopefully want to get it off the hoist and driving under its own steam in a couple of days. So we don't have very long to do that, and I'm very excited to take you guys along for the journey. You can see there's a stack of fresh parts in front of me. Now, these two diff centers are coming out. They're going straight to Pinnacle to get rebuilt. Um, it's a little bit out of my league, to be honest with you. A couple of um, TJM Pro Lockers, plus a full diff rebuild kit from Drive Tech. I'm talking about crown wheel pinion, all the bearings, everything you need to make these diffs nice and staunch. They're gonna come back to me. We're gonna put them back into Sooty. Um, in the meantime, we're also gonna take the um, transfer case, get that rebuilt. We've got a stack of Drive Tech parts for that. I've also got some reduction gears, which I'm pretty excited about. 20% reduction in the old transfer case. That's gonna make Sooty an absolute little crawly boy off-road. It's gonna be insane. I can't wait to drive. Never had gears before in um, my 80 series. So it's really gonna step it up a notch, I think. I'll be able to tackle things a little bit slower and methodical and um, being twin locked as well. It should be an absolute animal. Can't wait for that. Um, for now though, I better get stuck into it. I've got a stack of work to do. Maybe get something cold, buckle in and enjoy the ride because hopefully it won't be too long before we're driving this bad boy. Righto, there's no time for messing around. I'm solo today and there's one hell of a list of things that needs to get done in the next few days. First up, let's pull the diffs apart. Gone the wrong way. The amount of times I've done that. Right, I've got left and right dyslexia. That oil, certainly not fresh. It should not look like that, the old diff oil, but we are rebuilding all these diffs, so it doesn't really matter. I've got um, new centers, basically new pinions, new crowns. I've got all the spider gears. Uh, I've got some lockers to go in here as well. So these are getting a full overhaul. Um, I'm just draining it all now. I'll pull the centers out and then um, we can get those rebuilt so they can go back in. The whole goal of this build is to do as much as possible at home in the shed. There'll be a few experts along the way to help out, but most of all, it's just oh, me. Oh, they got some weight. Wherever possible, I'm trying to use as much of old sooty on the new build as I can. We'll be rebuilding a lot of the parts, so it's just like old soot, but new. We could just buy new everything, but where's the fun in that? All right, this is a bit dodgy, but all my tools are in the back of uh, the Dirty 30 at the moment, which is not at home, so we've just got to make do. It's working though, so <laughs> it's only dodgy when it doesn't work, I feel. Next on the list, we're going to take the whole front end apart, starting with the brakes, taking the CVs, the axles, and even stripping down the swivel hubs. We'll restore and replace parts later, but for now, it's all going to come off. Little shorty boy. With the front end completely stripped down, it's time to move on to the rear. Brakes, suspension, and finally the diff. It is rusty. Wow, that's really rusted on that one. Okay, I'll be back with the cavalry. If in doubt, Bunty out. Yep, she's on the big setting. Absolutely amazing. All right. We're getting there, we're getting there. <laughs> Ripper, well, this are out. Um, I think I want to clean up and I have a couple of cold ones. I might start cleaning these diffs up in the morning. Get the wire wheel out. It might be a bit late to start hitting the grinder now. But um, yeah, that wasn't too painful. All right, another day. And um, I guess today's big goal is to get these diffs cleaned up. Yeah, it's pretty gross at the moment. She's in a little bit of a wire wheel, give it a good clean, and then um, I can give it a bit of a raptor coat. All 
All right, have a go at this. We're getting to the stage where we're masking everything up at the moment. So anything you don't want to coat with Raptor, well, you've got to cover it up. So it's pretty messy, but that'll do the job. And I've also got Mitch helping out. Watch out. I've got him on the good jobs. Just cleaning all this sort of stuff up. It's coming up pretty good, so. It's looking good, so we'll take that up and um, it's all in the preparation, I suppose. You get that right and uh, the Raptor will be applied pretty easily after that. Before applying the Raptor, the dips are gonna need a quick spray of Raptor Adhesion Promoter. That way, it gives the Raptor the best chance to stick. And it's as simple as that. The Adhesion Promoter will also act as a rust preventative. So just apply your Raptor and you're done. It looks just like I bought one. All right, this morning, um, front suspension is gonna come out of sooty because I need to use a couple of the arms and a few components um, on new sooty. So I'll take all that apart. I've got a couple of um, jack stands. We're gonna have old sooty just sitting on jack stands. It's gonna be, oh, it's gonna look pretty second hand after this one. Um, the front diffs and the rear diffs are just sort of sitting on the ground and um, all suspension will be out. The good news is I'll be able to put that shiny new diff back in a Sweetie Mark II and um, start the ball rolling in the assemble process, which means that hopefully we were not too far from driving this thing on its own steam once we do a lot of work anyway. Check out these, these are fancy looking shocks. These are actually fulcrum prototypes. They were actually for the Dirty 30. I've had them sitting in the shed for a while and they look way too good just to leave in the shed. So Sooty Mark II gets these ones. Um, little prototype from fulcrum. So I reckon uh, these are gonna be pretty red hot and they're nice and long too. So it's gonna suit the suspension set up perfectly. Alright, we're nearly ready to drop those shocks in, the diff will come up and that front diff will be supported now by the shock hose. Then we'll put some um, steering arms and things like that in and it's really starting to come together. This is the exciting bit now where new parts are bolting onto the vehicle and it's starting to really look like a sooty. Righto, we're back in the shed and working on sooty but this time we've got the cavalry. Jesse's here and he's gonna join me helping basically to get sooty. The whole plan is to get sooty off the hoist, driving on its own steam. It seems pretty remarkable at this stage when you look at it, you go, how's it gonna be driving on its own steam? But actually, <laughs> we're getting actually quite close because we're gonna basically rebuild the swivel hubs, put all the bearings in, get the brakes on, and if we can get the wheels slapped on, this you'll centers be, you'll in. You'll be driving it. I'll be driving. How good's that? Oh, I've got to put a clutch pedal in. There's, look, there's a list of things <laughs> that need to happen, but you know, with Jesse's help, a couple of big days in the shed, yeah. I reckon we might be halfway to driving sort of on its own steam, which is pretty exciting, mate. Yeah, good. Right, bit of messy work to start with, clean a few old parts up, and then all the new parts go on. Let's get started. All right, mate. First up, we're gonna clean and replace the front swivel hub assembly. I'm straight into removing the old bearings while Jesse's on the dishwashing duties getting rid of all the old grease. Toyota apprentice, I suppose you've got to start somewhere. How <laughs> yeah, good. There's actually nothing nice about any of these jobs right now. <laughs> uh, oh, different colour grease this one. Oh, this is a honeycomb. <laughs> give, give it a taste, I don't think it would taste like honeycomb. <laughs> that noise. Once again, we've had to return to the trash pile looking for parts. This time, we're hoping to find the lock washers from the bearings. There you go, there's one. <laughs> Bingo. Bingo, we're after that. And one more, hopefully. Look for the bearing. It'll be attached to the bottom side of the bearing. Oh, there it is. Yay. Got it? Yeah, it's under right at the bottom. No, <laughs> it's good because it's really been covered in like every bit of grease ever. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes, that's a win. <laughs> Look at that. You just give it a little clean up. Oh, well, loves it. Right, we're back on.
And you're probably wondering why I'm reusing the old studs off Sooty. Now these are ARP studs, so they're really strong. They're the same size as well. Now I like to go this way because on 80 series especially, when you put bigger tires on um, and you're forward driving, you tend to break a lot of these studs if they're the standard ones. These ARP ones, if as long as they're nice and tight in, that's why I'm using Loctite, they'll, uh, be, they'll be really strong and you'll never ever break them. Uh, a lot of other people drill these out and put like 10 mil studs in, same as like a 79 series cruiser, or 100 series cruiser. Um, which is great, it works, but if you do snap an axle and you're out in the bush, you can't just get another axle without drilling um, that out for a 10 mil stud. So I find this is the best way. We're just starting to put the swivel halves back together now. What I'm doing here is just using a little bit of Loctite, oh, just a little bit like that. <laughs> and um, the reason why, especially on Toyotas, you'll find that if these are not tight, which does happen, they do get loose, they'll actually snap off-road. And once they snap, you basically the wheel just flops around and comes off, and it's a real drama. I've had it happen to me before, um, just in Cape York. Actually, Jesse and I saw it just the other day with a 79 series. Um, so we've Loctited all these in. Um, this is quite a rewarding part because as it all starts to come together, and to be frank with you, um, I'm sort of learning my way around it. I've done this many times before, but if you don't do it all the time, you forget which, which sort of lay, which way the uh, felts go in together and how it all sort of works. But the best way to do it is probably just get like an exploded diagram of everything, then you can actually just follow it through pretty easy. But um, something take shape. Who would have thought, Jesse, you working on a Toyota, mate? Yeah, I know. A bit different, it's a learning curve. Yeah, you'll be just sure. surprised at the over-engineering you're about to see. Yeah, yeah, and Just okay. the quality, attention to detail. <laughs> I mean, these things are obviously a work of art. Yeah. Just... Wouldn't be used to working on such high-performance vehicles. No, it's definitely a new experience. <laughs> Cone washers and studs everywhere. It's um, yeah, lovely, isn't it? a bit over-complicated, like you said. <laughs> over-complicated. <laughs> A few moments later. Right, Jesse, this time we put it on, mate, we'll try it this way. Oh, so it goes to the back? Instead of the front, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yep, 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 yep. So, bingo. That's the thing, working on patrols, I mean, it's nice that in your career you, you're stepping up in the world now working on a piece of art like this one, mate. It's basically a Toyota apprenticeship. Like, <laughs> yeah, well. I'm learning new you're, things. You're with the wrong bloke, unfortunately, <laughs> but. <laughs> Always keen to see the young guys have a crack. <laughs> You'll get there one day, Jesse. This is a really tricky bit because you want to get these axle seals right. If you go to all this effort and axle seals are not on right or you've half ruined them in the process, which I've already done, mind you, have a this one. This is uh this has been shornified, this one. It's not good at all, but basically what's going to happen, you're going to put everything back together, you're going to drive it in the first like 100 kilometres, oil's going to start just absolutely coming out the back here, it's going to put all your hard work, it's going to be a waste, you've got to rip the whole thing back open, so I'm going to get this right. It's looking good, Jesse. It's good. looking good, mate. Yeah, yeah. I'm not in all the Bit way Bit of yet. improvement. Look at that. Oh, that's much better. It's better than the other, the other <laughs> go, that's for sure. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> it does. And um, the good news is we've actually, our local art shop here in Mudry Bar, we've run them right out of um, axle seals. We've bought them all because we figured we we're going to make a couple of mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's going on today? <laughs> Stop it. I'm just trying to make Jesse feel more confident working on 80 series, I suppose. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse, you're doing the other side by yourself, mate. I'm not helping with this bit. <laughs> it's difficult and not uh, very stressful. Like a bought one. Oh, like a bought one, he reckons. The diff centers have come back from Pinnacle, all locked up with TJM lockers, and Jesse doesn't muck around to get them in. <laughs> Thread her in, eh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's all about feel when it comes to these sort of jobs. And I feel it's not going that well, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> there we go. 
Oh, there we are. That's what you want it. Look at that. Starting to come together. Yeah. We've got the axles in, obviously got the center in. We have the spindles on, and now we're just putting the front end all back together. So this is the fun bit, the easy bit now. It's all cleaned up, new parts, just going together like a dream. And then um, we're we'll basically ready to put the brakes, bleed the brakes. Yeah. Um, back on its own wheels soon. Very, very soon. With the bearings replaced, it's time to start looking at the brakes. Oh, look at that, Jesse. Works. Yeah, we've got slide action. That's good news. Well, just when we're mucking around with these calipers for the rear, they had a little bit seized. So we've actually got a rebuild kit for the calipers. So while we're here, it's a messy, fiddly job, but um, we're gonna give this a crack. Now, normally you'd have a bit of compressed air blow and the piston would come straight out, but not in today's workshop. We don't have compressed air, but um, because that's my garage, and I need to sort that out. And if we can get a good grip on that. Oh, that's seized in there, man. It's in there? Yeah, that one's not moving. Leverage wherever you can. Who said if you had a big enough lever, you could move the earth? It's one of those famous ones. I can't quite remember right now. Hey, Isaac Newton, Jesse Gleason, 2022. <laughs> it's coming. Yeah. Why you, if, what, I, what, if I if I hold this. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's it. Start to free up. Oh yeah. Here it comes. Here Fire it out. comes. Oh, look at that. That was pretty seized. Easy as that. Yeah. Exactly right. Very easy. Oh, they got me in the eyeballs. Yeah, that's, that's pretty gross down there. We've been working handbrake for about two weeks when we drive this thing. Pretty exciting. Lots of people are going to tell us that we've done this wrong. <laughs> We're definitely not going to do this the right way. No, it's going to take about 800 goes. Now, while it looks like we're fumbling around with the brakes, which we are, the job is getting done properly. And one thing you've got to keep in mind with brakes is if you're not confident to do this job yourself, get an expert to do it because brakes is not something you want to muck around with. That one's now the model. That's <laughs> so the, yeah. When we finish, they're both going to be wrong. <laughs> oh, oh, look at that. Probably the only good thing about Toyota is floating back axles. <laughs> well, I've met him, mate. Yeah. And, uh, Wish you had more time, I could go through all of them, but <laughs> oh, you hang around here long enough, you'll hear enough. <laughs> all right, put that bearing in. Righto. That bearing is in now. We screw this on and we need to line this up. There's a couple of little Phillips heads that sit in there. This is the hardest bit sometimes. You want to try and keep the grease, I guess, under wraps a little bit because if you get too much grease, you won't be able to line the holes up. Now's the bit where we give it a little tighten. Okay. With the rear end pretty much done, it's time to get the front end finished. We're getting close now. I'll let you snap the bolts. <laughs> <laughs> We've gone in a couple of times, in and out. Now I've chosen to go with the Bendix upgrade yeah, kit nice. for soot. Doesn't it look great? I run the Bendix gear in the 200 and it's unreal, so it'll be a huge upgrade on old Sooty. And folks, as you'll notice, as we do all the bearings up, we're actually using the correct size sockets, so we're not being complete savages. We're doing this properly. Oh, okay, you could talk at the Toyota specs, or you could just use a little bit of experience and you get it pretty quick. Cool. Flash, brand new is brand new, mate. Everything's new. I suppose you could do that with Toyotas because the old parts don't last long, eh? No, well, the thing is, mate, once you get it right from the start, <laughs> you never have to worry about it again, ever, <laughs> except for sometimes. That's, that's Just putting the finishing touches now, and how good does it look? I honestly am getting so excited. Not long now before she's ready to hit the tracks. There's a lot left to do, but damn, what a good feeling it is to work on a project like this in your own shed with your mates. Oh, 
I'll tell you what though, in all seriousness, it's just nice to see brand new oils going in, all new grease, all these new parts. It's like a, it's gonna be a new truck really. Even though it's an old 80 series, I mean, when we're done with it, not much we haven't touched. Patrol front's a seven, eh? Hey? Front? Yeah. Seven litres? Yeah. No. Because they're high opinion. Hey, bucket. See, another reason why patrols aren't as good as Land Cruisers. Too much oil in the dips, they're too big. <laughs> you need more weight in the front to hold them down from doing wheel stands. Like yeah. With all the power. <laughs> oh. There you go. Like a big night on the chili, Jesse. <laughs> know all about that. Well, this is pretty insane. <laughs> Look at the colour of what's coming out underneath here. It's just disgusting. I mean, pretty clean 80 as you saw us been working on this thing all day today and my mate just dropped over some degreaser, which is pretty heavy duty. I don't know what it's called, but it's um it's insane, this stuff, and it's just cleaning up the underneath of soot like you wouldn't believe. It's gonna make life easy to work on. Should have done this right at the get-go, but um Tell you what, this is so much grime. There's like 30 years worth of, I guess, grime underneath this vehicle. It's all coming off now. It's gonna be super tidy. Oh, the bearings are nice and tight, mate. How good does it look with 35s on it, mate? Yeah, a set of tyres changes the whole look of it, eh? It looks unreal. It's got a little sooty suspension, sooty tyres, wheels. Just giving everything a bit of a clean up. Looks a million bucks. Never thought I'd say this, but it's looking pretty tough for a Toyota. <laughs> for a Toyota. <laughs> look at her, look at her. Where she wants to sit. Pretty much. That's it. That's what she's going to look like, folks. <laughs> that's not held up by the hoist, that's on the ground. I think you're dreaming, mate. <laughs> Thanks for today, mate. It's been a good couple of days, in fact. We've got a lot done. Got a fair bit done. Definitely learned a few things too, I think. But mate, every, made good progress. Every time I'm spinning a spanner, I'm always learning stuff. Yeah. And it's always good to do stuff in your own shed. I mean, mm. it's it's come a long way. It's and, definitely uh, starting to take shape, for sure. It's and, looking good. Now, the next step is, and um, I reckon, well, I don't want to jinx myself, but I want to say another day's work. I reckon. Driving. It'll be driving, yeah. And uh, that's so pretty, pretty bloody exciting. Now, obviously, there's a few cosmetic things that need to happen, like lights and all that sort of jazz, but the transfer case is actually getting rebuilt over at Pinnacle. Thought I'll let the experts handle that one, mate. Yeah. Um, some reduction gears going in that as well. Ooh, so that's, nice. that's really spicy. Really nice. And um, we're going to put all that in. Hopefully, that works with the cross member I've fabbed up. Um, I'll respray that. Clutch pedal in. Drive shafts. Good to go. We should be, we should be. In, in theory, <laughs> we should be good to drive. So oh, we're gonna, gonna bleed those brakes as well, but yeah. that's all an easy job. And I reckon one day, and this will be driving in and out by itself from the hoist, which is, which is great, that's mate. That's a pretty good outcome. All right. Definitely. Well, folks, now's the part of the video where, you know, I say, the build has been a great success to this point and I'm about to jump in sooty and take it for a drive. That's how um, it's supposed to go. But unfortunately, I won't be driving sooty today. So this becomes the end of the video for now because when we went to get the transfer rebuilt, turns out it had a big crack in it. And um, that meant that there was no point rebuilding that one. I need to find another transfer case before I can get old soot here to start running on its own steam. So until then, um, that's all for now. But as you can see, we've done We've done quite a lot of work on Sooty. It's come a long way, and um, I'm absolutely stoked to the progress I've had so far. Um, the good news is you'll get another build video um, where it all comes together. We'll actually drive it this time and um, start putting some of the bar work and all the cool stuff on it that makes it look real tough. So for now, um, this is enough on Sooty, but let us know in the comments um, what you think of Sooty so far. Um, you've been loving this build video because I've absolutely loved doing this at home in my shed and that's why things are going wrong. It's real. I'm taking you along for the journey. Um, when things go wrong, we say it how it is. We don't try and hide it up. We just say, you know, things happen. But as you can see, it's looking at an absolute weapon. So until next time, folks, I'll see you around.